All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I got a good one for you guys today. We're talking about pruning. Once again, this is a nice little follow-up pruning video to the last video we published uh, on pruning. We've covered a lot of the different topics now of reasons, I should say, reasons why you would want to prune a fig tree. And the last one, and probably one of the most important people overlook constantly with fig trees is pruning them for health. And I think when most people think about the health of their plants or the health of their tree, the most obvious thing is actually in the soil. You want to improve the soil health. And so that's about air and moisture in the soil. You want to have a nice well-draining soil, good organic material. It's well broken down. Um, you want to have good soil life as well. You want to have good fungi and bacteria in there. It's going to help your tree grow and gather the nutrients, uptake the nutrients that it needs. So even by actually correcting the pH of the soil and correcting any nutritional deficiencies, these are all very, I think, low hanging fruit. Using products like compost tea or mycorrhizae, um, mulch is incredible for improving your soil health. So, um, you know, that's not what we're talking about in today's video. I think if you have a really unhealthy fig tree and it's really quite young and small, that's probably what you have to pay attention to is improving that soil health. And a lot of it has to do with your green thumb. Getting that green thumb just by learning about air and soil moisture goes a very, very long way. We'll talk about that, I guess, in a different video for another day. But for now, if you have a tree that's somewhat established um, and it's not anywhere close to death, um, the main way we can improve the health of our tree is to rejuvenation prune it. Um, now, rejuvenation pruning is just a simple way of saying pruning out the unhealthy growth and leaving the healthy growth. So how do we know what's healthy and what's not healthy? Is well, on fig trees, they unfortunately suffer from fig mosaic virus. And actually it kind of makes it easy to determine what's healthy and what's not healthy. This leaf here in this tree is probably the perfect example of the virus it has modeling in the leaves, deformed leaves, spots, different colorations, versus other trees I have, the majority of them are rather healthy and the leaves look pristine and spotless and problem free and they're forming properly and they're growing the way that they should. This is because all the trees I have go through this rejuvenation process when they're young. And I find because fig mosaic virus is such a polarizing topic and there's not a whole lot of education on the topic, um, most people don't understand that if you can really lessen the symptoms of the virus, you're never gonna get rid of the virus. It's always gonna be in the cells of your tree, at least to my knowledge. Um, you can, of course, there's different methods. People use like crazy amounts of heat they talk about where you subject your fig trees to temperatures over 100. Um, you can also um, use tissue culture, but generally uh, you're never really gonna get rid of it. And I'm accepting that. but. I'm okay with it because I can severely lessen the symptoms of the virus by doing this rejuvenation pruning. Um, so, and I think it's really important to set up the, when you're setting up the form and the structure of your tree, when you do pruning, when you do training, when you do shaping, you have to also consider the health of your tree when you do that. If you have an unhealthy base to your fig tree, your tree will always be unhealthy. I'll show you the perfect example of that. Here's a grafted tree I have. This one's called Rome Unknown. It's quite a, a really nice fig tree. I'm actually a big fan of it. And I grafted this one years ago to an unhealthy rootstock, rookie mistake. And because the rootstock is unhealthy, I can't actually rejuvenation prune this. I can't make some cuts really far down low and prune out that unhealthy growth because the unhealthy growth is in here. There's also some unhealthy wood in here on the scion, but the graft union is actually right in here. And so if I were to do that rejuvenation pruning, I would lose the scion. 
And so forever in this tree's life, it has been unhealthy. But to try to make it a little bit better, I've decided to prune it really far back this past fall. And it's now starting to leaf out, putting out these new growth points, and hopefully we get some new healthy growth. But I'm not banking on all of it being extremely healthy. It's just inevitable that this tree, I think, will always be unhealthy because of its base. And so if you have a tree that's showing a lot of symptoms of the virus, maybe, excuse me guys, maybe you have a tree like this one here, which is I think a good example where maybe only a little bit of the tree, like a, this branch here, or select portions of the tree have the virus, but m the majority of the tree is very healthy. Well, I would argue then at that point, you're probably good. Your base of your tree isn't perfect, but it's as good as it's probably gonna get. And you don't really have to worry about it. But if you have a tree where the entire thing is really struggling to grow and fruit and is really struggling with this virus, that's really what the virus does. You know, it affects the leaves. And so by affecting the leaves, you're affecting its ability to photosynthesize and if its ability to produce energy. So, you know, you really want to make sure that this virus early on and young in its years is not affected by this virus so you can have a healthy base to your tree. And that's what we did with this tree right here. I'll just show you guys. This was a, a fig. This is actually a black Celeste tree that I have. I pointed out specifically for this video because last year we talked about one healthy way to have a healthy fig tree. I think that was the title. I'll put the link in the description. We did a video on this exact fig where I removed this growth down here. Or I made a cut, I should say, down here. But the tree was up in this area and the growth was just so unhealthy that I knew it had to come out by doing this rejuvenation pruning. And instead, now actually I cut it way back and it's putting out a new shoot here, which is typical. When you prune fig trees really far back, they will almost always send up some new growth. Unless your tree is really young and fragile, you don't wanna do that. But I even do it on relatively young trees. Even on one gallon size trees, I've done it just to try to get these trees to send up some new healthy growth. This is an area here of my young trees. Some of them have problems. <laughs> some of them uh, we've made some mistakes on. Some of them are young grafted trees. Uh, some of these are trees that were grown for an entire season last year and should look like this or one of these other trees that we have at this point but I decided to prune them really far back because they were unhealthy. And so here's a couple examples. Here's another one. I do this on, like I said, all of my trees. If I know that the tree has a problem with this virus and it's severe enough early in its life, I do not let the tree continue to grow and grow and avoid this situation. I will prune them back the best I can and always prune them back to encourage some of this new healthy growth. Now, sometimes you don't get that, okay? Like this shoot right here, I would argue is decent. This shoot's really healthy. There's looks like a little bit of sunburn there. This shoot's, I think, pretty healthy. Um, on this tree, as an example, we have this shoot that's healthy and these on the other parts of it, I don't think are. What you do is, once you prune it back, you recognize which of these shoots is healthy and you remove the rest. I'll let them grow for a little bit longer. So you can see like right here, here's some of that virus. So that's giving me a clue that perhaps this shoot here is not as healthy as I'd like it to be. But actually it does, it seems like that. Sometimes the first flush of leaves on any tree can be a bit strange and unhealthy. So I do this, you know, I practice what I preach, guys. I do this on all the trees, make sure that they're set up, their form is right. I, and to, to be totally honest with this tree here, I should have done it already. I didn't do it, but I wanna make sure that this tree fruits this year. I'm actually concerned about its identification. I don't believe it's properly labeled. And so as a result, um, I decided not to prune it back because I wanna evaluate the fruits. Once I evaluate the fruits, if I like the tree, I will probably plant it in the ground. And when I plant any tree in the ground, I will show you guys right now. 
because I already have trees lined up. Here's actually a bunch of trees I'm planting at a different property. And then over here is a bunch of trees I'm gonna plant today. And all of them were cut back this spring or this past fall in preparation to be planted because when you cut them back, they are just healthier. And when you plant them in the ground and you cut them back like this, they become very, very, very healthy trees. To the point where, you know, this fig mosaic virus, the symptoms of this are pretty much non-existent. I thank you guys for watching. Please, if you like this one, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We'll catch you guys for the next video. Take care, guys.